Oh, my mega Alolan golem is going to destroy your ultra beasts. And now, coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town radio tower, it's the one, the only, Pucko Podcast! And welcome to the 351st episode of the Puckle Podcast. I am your host, Trainer Thatch, here today with my stupendous co-host, starting, of course, with the one, the only, Scrawn. It's uh, Zakron Thatch, thank you very much. Oh, oh, okay, well, you're always going to be <laughs> Scrawn to me. There's a Z there. There's a Z. <laughs> and also, for you, and also welcome for the first time to the show, R Sigma. Well, stupendous doesn't start with an R, so... <laughs> Ooh. we're already off brand mm, I'll accept that compliment of sorts <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those of you who are unaware our Sigma is on all of the freaking shows over on Puckle Plus and he is now finally joining our ranks it's been a long overdue addition to the show yeah, out of all the people in Puckle, I'd say that R Sigma is like knowledgeable about like both video games and trading game card games to like you know, uh the the tier where like you obviously know what you're talking about in both regards. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just don't ask me about Pokemon. I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a majority of Pokemon players. Probably true. <laughs> I oh really do. Thatch? You got your triple threat right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, just kidding. I'm barely even passable at Pokken. Mm. So welcome to the Puckle Podcast. Puckle, of course, standing for the Pokemon Underground Champions League, a nonsensical name I came up with in 2007. I finally claimed ownership of this. And as always, though, we are going to talk to you about everything Pokemon, from the video game to the trading card game to even Pokemon Generations. Though we haven't talked about that in a long time. However, welcome to the show if you're new. Welcome back if you're old. We have a great show lined up for you today, and we'll get into it. But first, I want to ask you guys what you've been up to lately in Pokemon, in life. How how are you doing? How are you doing? Z- 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 Gron? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have been jumping back into Pokemon so hard after Pokemon. You know how it is. Like, uh, the spark has been relit. Every I year. finished building a competitive TCG deck. I got a booster box of Celestial Storm. I've been playing the games again. It's just a good time all to around. It's sort of like I'm drowning my sadness in Pokemon, but who really cares? You know, I'm having a good time. I don't know if it's drowning sadness. I just know that PuckleCon is always that event that helps me recharge my batteries <laughs> once a year. Fair. I totally see that. Oh, in my booster box, I did pull uh, Full Art uh, Rayquaza EX, which was cool. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, that'll and be this... good for, like, one set, and then rotation will happen. Uh, you know, like, a lot of people are like, sell it now while it costs a lot. But, you know, like, it's something that's going to be in the game for two years or so in standard, and it will mm-hmm. probably see play and expand it because of, like, synergies and stuff. So it's something I'm going to hold on to in the long term. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Does he have his Mega Bracelet yet? Uh, that will remain unknown in, until after the Summer League. <laughs> I must have the element of surprise. Like, whenever someone looks at my bad battle roster, I need them to like see a Tyranitar and be like, is that a Mega Tyranitar? And they'll question themselves. And then it's going to end up being a Choice Scarf Tyranitar, and they're going to cry. 
So they shouldn't question themselves because Mega Tyranitar is not that good in singles. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I'm just letting you know. Should it, it's just not that good in singles. You might as well just run regular T-Tar. You're just making me want to run it more. I did, actually, that first season of Piddle. I was, a Mega oh. T-Tar was my Mega. Yeah, I know. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a good time. How about you, Sigma? What you been up to? Uh, well, last weekend was that Eevee competition, the Let's Go Cup. Ah, that's right. How'd you do? Uh, I think I just broke into the 1600s by the end again. Okay. Um, oh, there were so many Eevees that all yawned at me. And then when I finally chose to start attacking turn one and then just use the Z-move turn two, I ran up against like a choice banded double edge one that killed me. Oh. oh. Or I disrespected the Ash Hat Pikachu and that was the only Pikachu oh, I lost to. Oh, wait, they allow that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's locked to Hardy, so it's not very good, but it's Z-move has like a 50% chance to crit. So. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know that either because... Ash Hat Pikachu's garbage, but whatever. <laughs> then you should just run that because that's obviously the right choice. You're gonna at least win fifty percent of your matches. Is that the <laughs> Catastropica Z move? Mm-hmm. Or no, that's the regular one. It's yeah. the ten thousand volts. Oh yeah, ten million volts or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, know. I gotcha. Yeah, I didn't know what it did until that competition. It's like it critted me. Oh, it has a fifty percent chance to crit. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's unfortunate <laughs> that is unfortunate oh man so yeah no, as for myself i mean we did we streamed last night that was a good time for those last night was friday we're recording this on saturday by the way so fourth wall breaking right here i'm not doing it live into your headphones right now and <laughs> people think that sometimes and they'll like message me while they're listening to the podcast and i go i have no idea what you're talking about they're like, well, you said it on the podcast. I'm like, you heard an hour and a half of what was probably a two and a half to three hour conversation. I, I mm-hmm. do not remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> but regardless, uh, I we streamed last night. I did some shiny hunts instead of battles, and that was a good time. I saw that. I was, was there for time. the moment you found that shiny Noibat, and I was like, yeah, that was like, pretty ah, hard. Yeah, we found it. Yeah. Bye everyone. I'm done now. <laughs> it was so late. Well, I, I was gonna. I was planning on going to like a hundred encounters for Noivat and then just going to bed, because I started the night off going, yeah, we're just gonna do Cottony today, and then we'll go to bed once we get Cottony, right? And mm-hmm. because I thought Cottony would be a good one, because then we could like have the Whimsicott tie-in. It's really cute, whatever. Because I just want to do some easy shiny hunts instead of competitive battling. One of those is much more involved than the other, and. So I jump into the Cottony, and within like 20 or 30 encounters, I got the shiny Cottony. And so <laughs> that was no time at all. That was like a half hour. In a half hour, we got shiny Cottony. And I was like, well, I guess we should keep doing stuff. And then, uh, what's his name? Bod Talk suggested that we do shiny Noibat. Shiny Noibat's legit, by the way. Uh, the problem yeah. with Noibat is its call rate isn't as high as something like Cottony. So first of all, it wasn't calling things all the time. And then it also knows supersonic, which is incredibly annoying. So it was just yeah. a longer fight for Noibat than it should have been. So I was going to go to 100 encounters, but we got it at 64. And I was like, you know what? It's 1140. We have to record tomorrow morning. I'm going to bed. <laughs> I was really surprised you weren't using uh, like a, one, a Pokemon with synchronize and false swipe so that you could get the... Oh, I don't care about them for competitive. Oh, okay. Uh, if I want competitive, I'll go breed it or something. I don't need to worry about it. I think I'm going to use it. Maybe we. I'm not entirely sh- certain what I'm going to do with this. Maybe we'll turn it into like Thatch trying to get a shiny living dex, which sounds like an awful experience. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see. Yeah, I, I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> I know you wouldn't do it to me, but it's a question of if I'll do it to myself. Well, people like pain. People do like pain. <laughs> the only thing I don't want to do with that scenario is then you have to soft reset for legendaries. And that just doesn't sound fun. I've done that like three times and it's miserable. And it is I'll miserable. Probably, I'll probably do it for a Groudon too. And a Rayquaza. <laughs> 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 Gotta go get those shinies so you can look swag at the at the Pokemon competitions this season. When they inevitably Ooh, yep. tell you you have to get you get to choose two legendaries, so you have to pair something with your Necrozma. 
Ah! Uh, <laughs> or everyone's just going to be using the Primal Groudon and Primal Kyogre again. <laughs> Honestly, you should just start writing uh, Yvettel if Necrozma gets a lot of steam. Because yeah. Yve uh, Yvettel counters Necrozma pretty hard. Pretty much. But then you start getting, you start getting uh, uh, what's it called, Xerneas to come because of that, and then we end up with a nice circle, you know, of just three. <laughs> and a really unstable meta. And there's just like, what other Pokemon are you going to bring? It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <sighs> but that is what's been going on with me. I've also been working on Perler Beat still. Yeah, yeah. I'm How listening. are you up to now? Uh, I've only gotten through Beedrill. We haven't, we, I took a side quest because I wanted to start working on this other piece that mm. I was looking at. Cause I came up with a really good idea, but then it just didn't, in the execution, it didn't come out as well as I wanted it to. So I'm going to try to restart that and see what we can no. get. Wait, what um, are you talking about? Uh, so I don't know if you paid attention. This might've been the week you weren't on and you might've missed the show. So uh, perler beads are these little tiny plastic beads that you melt. I mean, if you were a kid, you probably did them once as like arts and crafts. Oh yeah, totally. And you can do cool pixel art with it. And That's so cool. what we've been doing is me and my wife have been going and we've been making like the Pokemon sprites, like the ones that you have when they're in the party and stuff like that, just for funsies. And Sweet. I got really, I've been getting really into the, into the craft and you can start doing like bigger and more ambitious, uh, kinds of work with it. And so I've got one that I'm trying to do right now that I'm pretty excited about. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> and I, I want one. <laughs> I, I'll show you when this is all done because it's all going to get mounted to a canvas. I'll show it to you guys and then we can see how it goes. Sweet. I'm pretty excited for this one that I have in my mind. And I want to see how it goes and maybe it'll do something awesome. So that that's where we'll leave that. Uh, just keep, stay tuned for Thatch's adventures and plastic belt beads for children. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep it up. So we are going to kick it on over, though, guys, to the news. So let's cue that epic music. Radio Tower. This just in. And on to the news. So there isn't actually that much news, but let's dig right into it. So if you were watching anything this week for Pokemon, first of all, you probably watched the Smash Direct. We got a bunch of new Pokemon that are going to be in Pokemon, or not in Pokemon Smash Brothers, in just Smash Brothers. King K. Rule is basically a Pokemon. Yeah, right? absolutely. <laughs> And but Alolan Executor is there now, not as a fighter, but as a Pokemon. These are all Pokemon from the Pokeballs. There's Mimikyu, which does Let's Snuggle t Forever, and then you have Pukumuku, which is essentially Wobbuffet, and <laughs> then you have Ditto, which transforms into your fighter and acts as a, as a separate one. I'm a little sad that it's just a purple version of your fighter, and not like your fighter with Ditto eyes, but I can understand why. Gen 2 had purple clones, so it's cool. Yeah. And then you also have, uh, what is it? You have Vulpix, both Alolan and not Alolan are in there, and they just Ice Breath and Ember, respectively. And then you also have Marshadow, who just beats you up. I believe those That's are all really the big good spread. confirmations. I, yeah. I really like that. That's cool. And I assume hmm. we're going to see a lot of the classics, because all of the stages are coming back, which is really cool, which gets me hyped, because then you get... Um, what is what was the original one? That was Silphco building, right? I think we've seen that. I think that's in. Yeah, that well, it's... no, that is in. They brought all of them back, and then Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Stadium Two are back. Unova Pokemon League's back. Poke uh, Floats is not. Po oh, Poke Floats is not, but that's fine. Nobody liked Poke Floats. What? That. So many people like Poke Floats that you're gonna get so much like e e uh, so much hate mail from that that statement alone. Pucklepodcast at gmail dot com. <laughs> you should take back that statement now before it happens because so many people love Pokemon <laughs> all right all right people you heard them send in your angry mail backs why does it thatch like pokey floats because it wasn't good <laughs> all right and if you want to uh so there was a little bit of let's go news this week 
So in Let's Go, Koro Koro dropped, revealing that Mega Evolutions are going to be making a return in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. So you can get Mega Charizard, Mega Blastoise, Mega Venusaur, and whatever else there was in Pokemon Let's Go. So that's something. That's a thing. They also showed Lieutenant Surge off and that he's got a Raichu just like he did in Yellow Version. Then we finally got a real confirmation that Jesse and James are in the game. So that's cool. And then you do double battles with them, which I think is pretty fitting. Yeah, that's cool. I like that addition. That is a really nice addition, in my opinion, just because I thought it was a missed opportunity. Because I remember being a kid and just being like, why can't we do 2v2 fights? That would be so cool. And then it inevitably came out, but I feel like they missed that opportunity with Jesse and James being actually transported into the game. One game that was really good about having lots of double battles was Emerald, because they were kind of optional, too, since you could technically most of them as single battles but mm-hmm. like yeah i really enjoyed that they did a really good job with that i will say that emerald did a, handled a lot of things really well including that battle frontier thing we all know and love and miss get out your bingo cards every time. <laughs> everyone <laughs> all right one day somebody will get a bingo uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh it, but they showed that they it's a uh, really cool megas are coming back it'll be interesting to see how it goes i think the more important thing that we got out of this because i think there was a video that accompanied it as well on youtube is that we also got clips of the multi-battle stadium that exists and it's depressingly the same green digital color that they've been using for the past two generations and it makes me sad and hurts my soul i really Mm. wish that there was a feature where you could select like your setting that you battle in that was the coolest thing. Like back in like uh, Gale and like you could hook your SP up to Gale of Darkness or Coliseum and like pick yeah. one of the stages that they had. And that was like, oh, I'm on an island and I'm doing battle with Pokemon. It's like the coolest thing. It was the same thing with uh, what was it with Battle Revolution? And I think they can do it. They have all of these art assets already in the game, right? Mm-hmm. All you have to do is make a list and let us click the button. That's all you have to do. I know some people have even used the emulator to actually go into the game and they can actually play battle videos with different backgrounds on the emulator. And that's just Mm. something I wish we had. So I think the main thing holding this back is or are the moves camouflage and the move Mm. secret power, which both have effects based on where you're battling. So they want to keep it stagnant, which is unfortunate. I mean, you can still have it stagnant, though, if you say in, like, yeah. PvP, it doesn't matter. Even then, I think it would be cool if you had different stages, even with that. I don't care. It would remind me a lot of the Pokemon anime, where they play off the environments in, like, their league battles. Mm. I think that would be really cool. You can make it an option to turn on and off or something like that. Very easy to do. That would be really cool for them to do in the 2019 Pokemon game, Game Freak. I hope you're listening and taking notes. I'm sure one of you are. <laughs> You can just do that. Just take some notes, write it down, be like, this is what Thatch wants, so we'll make sure it doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, so yeah. we're going to do that. And so, But I'm really, I really hope that we get something like that back in the future, just because it would be cool to battle in different environments. I'd be cool with that. It would be even cooler if the environments did something, like secret mm-hmm. power and camouflage. Because then we could actually do something in Puckle where we're just like, okay, you your next battle, but it has to happen in this arena, right? <gasps> yes. Right? Wouldn't that be mm-hmm. awesome? Like yeah. you do like, Piddle and you go, you have to use this arena. In Piddle, I think it would have a much bigger difference because you have people trying to do random strategies like that. For those of you who are unaware, Piddle is our Puckle Draft League where you have you usually use bad Pokemon and come up with unique strategies every week. Yeah. I yep. kind of wish they would use like the gym backdrops for battles because that's fine too. Yeah, the ones in Let's Go even look really cool. Yeah, you even have the fans in the crowd, and I'm such so a big great. fan of that. Ha <laughs> ha! Such a big fan of that. Yeah, I'm a Rotom. All right, that went over people's heads. Oh, but moving <laughs> on in the news. To be fair, it was a bad joke, so... <laughs> you know what? Your jokes are bad, okay? My jokes okay, are gold. My jokes are bad. Like, like, air conditioning in my house is currently out, so, like, we had to bring out some box fans, and I was like, that's fantastic. So, <laughs> we're on the same page, you know? The next uh, piece of news, and probably the last one we'll talk about here, 
is that more information regarding the 2019 Pokemon circuit was released on Friday. We know now the months of the internationals. We know that there is the uh, Latin America International November 16th to 18th in Sao Paulo in 2018, which is weird because that's usually when the uh, European International happens in London. But catch this, Oceania International is happening in Australia once again because I don't think there's anywhere else in Oceania that you could actually have that. That is February 2019. But the European International is now in April where the Latin American International used to be. And it's no not in London. It is going to be in Germany. Hmm. Following that, the North American International is no. I, everybody was speculating, including myself, that it was going to be the 5th, 6th, and 7th of July 2019. However, they announced that the month is going to be June 2019, which I find incredibly know, interesting. Do we know which state or city it's in? We know nothing. Yeah, we'll probably get those details later on in the year. I expect them to, to give it to us far earlier this year because this is way earlier than they've typically given these dates before because yeah. they've never given date or months even for internationals until – like right up like three months before the international happened. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this develop. They did really well with the regionals as well earlier this year. They've released all of the regionals for 2019 already. So that's really cool. Including that was one... like in May. Yeah. <laughs> they did really well. I told them to, I like that was the one thing they needed to do to step up. I don't know that there's much they can do to save the video game. I think that's a topic for another day. I really want to do hit that topic at some point, but I think in terms of TCG, that's fantastic because then people can plan way more in advance. We -hmm. still don't know any numbers of points that you need. It'll probably be tweaked. I can just see it being tweaked to like 500 this year for at least TCG players. Mm. Well, they upped the points for Premier Challenges back to 30 again, so I can see it. Oh, that's good. I can see it going back to 500. I didn't catch that one. I am happy about that because Premier Challenges weren't worth going to. Like back when they were only worth 20 points. It meant nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. But that is going to be it for the news, guys. We are going to close it off here and we're going to go switch it on over to Puckle's Pokey Quiz, where we're going to quiz your co-host on their innate Pokemon knowledge. And welcome to Pokos Poke Quiz, where we're going to quiz your co-host on their innate Pokemon knowledge. Of course, that means no internet browsers. Sigma and Scrawn will be operating as a team together to answer five questions about Pokemans. And they will be competing for points against the other co-host of the podcast. It's the first co-host of 30 points. So they they always they don't have partners specifically, but they always compete with one another compete together in a collaborative manner during this segment. And so there are five questions. One of those has a bonus point. And then you also have a hint that you can cash in if you get all of the questions correct without using the hint for a possible total of seven points today. So if you guys are ready, I've got a bunch of questions and I'm really excited to ask them to you. I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. Let's do this. (laughs) I'm almost worried now, but yeah, let's go. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right, so our first question comes from Doc Knox. It's a number question, so I need to uh, give you a plus or minus on it. So it's a plus or minus four on the number, just as a heads up. How many Pokemon does Ash currently own? Uh, we're going to also collapse all of the Tauros, just as a heads up. We're going to collapse that into one. Oh, uh, does it count release God. Pokemon? Not release Pokemon. These are the ones he currently owns. Okay, so no Pidgeots involved in this. I mean, you could use a general, like, are we doing, like, in the ballpark number for this? Yeah, you got a plus or minus four. Okay, so in this case, it might just be prudent to, like, because generally, if he, rele- if he like, catches above six in a generation, he releases one or, like, yeah, lets it pursue its ambition. So I'm thinking... Unless you're in Gen 5, where he just has, like, an ever-flowing party of ten Pokemon that are ever in rotation. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So we can keep that in mind. Though, and then like do for the other generations, like just do times six, maybe. Yeah. Is is that like uh, a reasonable strategy? Uh XY he only had four because he released Greninja 
and Pikachu. So uh, oh, I did and, not know that. Uh, Al- Alola, he only has four as well, I think. So huh. that's eight. Uh, put ten down for Unova. I don't know. Eighteen. Uh, Sinnoh was probably like six. Okay. So that puts us up to 24. 24. Hoenn? Uh, also around five or six. I think he had a full team in Hoenn because he had Glalie, Sceptile. Like, to have a weird Pokemon like Glalie, it's... Yeah, five or six yeah. again. So let's say it's 30. Okay. Uh, I think he had maybe... Johto. Johto. Johto was weird because <laughs> he was really... Yeah. Because he went along. Mm-hmm. But I, I can think of five or six. So 36. Mm-hmm. Uh, Indigo, probably another seven or eight. Yeah. So I'd say like around 40. And then we have to keep in mind. 40 to Pika- 45? Like we have to keep in mind Pikachu's always with him. So we should yeah. just deduct seven or so. Uh, I kind of did that going through. That's why we did fives instead of uh, seven. Okay. So you think you'd like. like somewhere between 40 and 45, I think. 40 and 45. All right. So maybe like 41. Okay. Yeah, let's do 41 in case there's just like some extra stuff. Yeah. 41 is your final answer. That yes. is correct and within the error of margin. It's somewhere between Whoa. 40 and 42, depending on uh, if you're counting Squirtle and I think the other one's Primeape because they're in training oh. and can technically be called upon. Gujar was released actually as well. Oh, so yeah, it was. It's considered release. <laughs> So that's um, there's a whole bunch of nonsense, but yeah, you guys got it. That's a point. Like, good for you. Oh, guys. Wow, <laughs> wow, I'm really surprised. Actually, I was expecting to be like, oh, actually, based on this technicality, it's uh, like I had no clue for black and white. You guys did a good job. Yeah, <laughs> sweet. So, what was so the question number two? Uh, this one comes, I believe, from Dennis. What was the first Pokemon game to have specific music for legendary Pokemon? Do you think it was pinball? Okay, so main, I know main series earliest... Pokemon game. Main series. Oh, okay. Well, then I think it's gold and silver, but it could be yellow. <laughs> really? You think so? Uh, like what well, song? Because I, I know I was thinking like Diamond and Pearl. Yeah, but Ho Oh has its own theme. Ho Oh and Lugia. Okay, so you can go. And back the legendary to that. dogs have their own theme too. So we could just do gold and the silver then. Yeah, because yeah, I, gonna... I don't know about yellow, but I don't think yellow does. So, or they would have had it as battle option music in Usum and Ores. So, mm. well, not Ores. Ores didn't have the red, blue, yellow Pokemon in it, but I think it's gold and silver. Yeah, yeah, gold and silver seems like a good answer. Yeah, let's just go with that. Is that your final okay. answer? Yeah. That is correct. The legendary wow. dogs, Ho and Lugia. That's two guys. You guys are two. Uh, you guys are doing isn't real that, well. Isn't that that? Like, is that good film? impression? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> like, all right, moving on. So, next uh, question. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult. In Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Of the potions that heal a fixed amount of HP, so not max potion or full restore, which is the least cost effective? Assuming standard hmm. Pokemart prices. Oh my god, you're making us do math. <laughs> okay, oh. okay, I'm gonna show you guys because I can do this. It's uh, okay, so it's 700 for a super potion which heals 60 HP. It's does it 1, still? 000... Uh, yes, it heals 60 okay. HP now. Um, I've been playing through, so I'm very familiar with this. I think it's a thousand two hundred for a hyper potion. And that's which... two hundred. Uh, no, hyper potions res- only restore one hundred and twenty now. One hundred and twenty. Uh, it's two thousand five hundred for max. It's three thousand for a full restore. Those don't matter. Uh, potion is three hundred for. 20. It's three hundred for twenty. So if we just do a quick division here, it should be. Okay, it should be a 30 over 2, so a this is a 15 to 1 ratio. This one is a, a 10. It's roughly an 
six to one. I think I'm just doing this mentally, so I might be wrong. Please don't get mad at me, listeners. This one's 10 to one. Uh, the way it's looking, so we're just looking at potion, super potion, and hyper potion, right, Thatch? Yes. I think so. least cost effective. I'm thinking it's just potion. Probably. Yeah. You it, said, how much it's, was the super potion? Uh, so according to my math, it's uh, super potion is 700, H, uh, 700 Pokemon yen for 60 HP. And how much does a potion cost? It's uh, 300 for 20 HP. So it's a 15 to 1 against a 11, an 11.6. Yeah, because you need three potions oh. to hit a super potion, and that's more expensive than buying a super potion. Yeah, so I'm thinking it's just normal potion fetch. Is that your final answer? Uh, yes. That is unfortunately incorrect. What so did I do wrong? The answer is actually hyper potion. Hyper potion, it costs 12.5 Poke Dollars for 1 HP. Uh, oh. A potion is 10 Poke Dollars per 1 HP, and a super potion is 11.67 Poke Dollars per HP. I believe it's because okay. you got the price of the hyper potion incorrect. Uh, the price of the hyper potion is 1,500 Poke Dollars. Oh, uh, I thought do it, it was 1,200. Ah, okay. The, I don't buy would... potions, so I have no clue. But you did your math right, if it makes you feel better. Yeah, I did. Ah, I just wish I had remembered that. It's not a problem, but that that's fine. You got the next question, which is your bonus point question. And this has to do with back in Gen 4. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, and I want to know, what are the locations that Cressalia and Darkrai call home in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl? One point for each location. Yeah. Isn't it Crescent Isle and New Moon Isle? It's a uh, full moon and new moon, right? Or maybe you're right about Crescent. Oh my god! I don't know. Is it? I know. Moon? I know. New I know Moon New Island. Moon is dark eye. Yeah, uh, and I think it's Full Moon Island or Half Moon Island. Crescent Isle is probably just the one for more S. So I'll go with you. Uh, but do you want to use the hint, or do you think we need it for the next one? Let's save it for the next one. I'm fine with just getting one here. I think it's a uh, full. It's a uh, New Moon and Half Moon Island. And then there's Iron Island off to the side, too. But <laughs> Are those your final answers? <laughs> yeah. Yes. New Moon Island and Full Moon Island? Ha, ha, half, half Moon. moon. Half full moon. moon Island? Full Moon. <laughs> full, All right. Full. Those are the correct answers. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, it's New Moon <laughs> Island and Full Moon Island. I'm going to give you that because you, you said it and you were so close. Uh, uh, and you guessed it was Half sorry. Moon. But it's Full Moon Island and New Moon Island. Uh, those that are doesn't the... make sense because Cresselia is a, is crescent. a crescent. It's in its name. Yeah, but it lives on Full Moon Island, so deal. Well, so um, deal with it. At least in Oras, it moved to a crescent island. We're good. <laughs> yes. So deal with it. That's where it lives. That's four points for you guys today. Our next question, as always, is a bonus point question. Or not a bonus point question. What was I saying? <laughs> it's a base stat question. <laughs> and this week, it's about bug type Pokemon. Oh, lowest gonna... HP, lowest HP. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get really sad here. I want to know what bug type Pokemon, not named Shuckle, has the highest base special defense. Oh, no, it's special defense. <laughs> uh, it might be Volcarona. Yeah, it might be Volcarona. That's the first thing that came to mind, <laughs> honestly. Uh, I like Whenever I think of bug Pokemon with high stats, I tend to think of just anything from black and white. Because <laughs> that's like the monstro bug region, Unova. Yeah, uh, let's see. It's not going to be Excavalier or its other buddy, Excelgore. That's not Spadefi. No, it wouldn't. Uh, not Scallopede either or Lubani. It might just be Volcarina. Uh, do we have Legendary Bugs? I know we have Pheromosa and Buzzwool, but they're definitely not it. You also have uh, the hint. Don't forget Yeah, let's that. use the hint. It yeah, shouldn't it's... be Genesec either, by the way, because mm. that's all offensive and speedy. Uh, it is a dual type, and it's got a very bad speed stat. Okay. So it's not Volcarona. <laughs> no. Uh, is it actually Fortress, do you think? Uh, that's a possibility. Yeah. It's got this really cool ability that would help against Volcarona. So, like, sturdy. <laughs> 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 um... 
that's what comes to mind because fortress is bulky but usually that's negated because if you're running any fire move you can still one hit ko it mm-hmm. uh this pokemon can be caught in molly garden oh oh it's a rack oh a rack yeah 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 is that your final that... answer <laughs> yes. my god <laughs> Uh, it's Araquanid. <laughs> yes. Araquanid is correct. Uh, <laughs> that gives you guys five points for today. So let's uh, let's go ahead and total up these points here. That's and a stat so... feeling guilty about giving odd hints. <laughs> uh, no, that's just me. W- Trying to speed it along because like... I'm so far ahead in the trivia. <laughs> I don't want to watch you guys struggle. <laughs> You're being too nice. All right, so that changes up the trivia board a little bit, kind of. In first place, we have Scrawn with 23 points, followed up in second place by a close 10 points by Supply Manic. Coming up in third is Gator with 8 points, followed by Jushiro in fourth with 7. Uh, Shamu and Sigma are tied for 6th place with 6 points. Maximus and Whimsicott are tied for 7th place with 5 points. Basket is in ninth place with four points and snag is in 10th with one point. Everybody else has yet to get on the board. So that is it for this episode of Puckles Pokey quiz. We are going to kick it on over to a short break guys. And we'll be right back at you with the topic. Hey everyone. It's basket here. Your favorite handheld accessory here to tell you all about our social media basket basket. Grandma, I'm in the middle of recording a commercial. I want a soda. Get off your lazy butt and don't forget the ice. But Nana, I have to tell everyone about the Discord. It's the best way to chat with the podcast hosts and make new friends. No one wants to be your friend. That's not true, Gammy. Puckle has tons of friends, followers, and users on our Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit page. I wasn't talking about Puckle. Everyone loves Puckle, but no one loves you. Now get me my soda. Here you go, Grandma. Too much ice. It's hurting my teeth. You're useless. Oh, is little baby basket crying? I'm not crying. I'm not a baby, Grandma. I'm not a baby, Grandma. I'm not a baby. Go ahead, finish your commercial, baby. Join us on Twitch, where you can watch Thatch play VGC and just sure play the TCG. We have a Patreon, where you can get exclusive access to a myriad of cool and exciting things. We have the best shirts in the Pokemon universe over at Public, And don't forget to also download Poco Plus, where you can listen to me on the TCG cast. Don't do it. Skip every episode Basket is on. Th- th- thank you all for listening. And now back to the episode. And welcome to the topic. Our topic today is going to be the rumor that's been going around about Pokemon from Generation 1 being re-trademarked. For those of you who are unaware about how this is significant is the last time Pokemon that already existed got their names re-trademarked, it was because they were getting Mega Evolutions. So with Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee coming out, we have a handful of Generation 1 Pokemon that just had their names trademarked again. They also are all final evolutions, which are really interesting as well. So it's Ooh. some kind of speculation here that there may possibly be new mega evolutions coming in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. So before we get too far into it, I, honestly, I really just want to dig into it and talk about how, one, how feasible it is, but also how silly some of these mega evolutions could be. <laughs> The ones that got re-trademarked are Golem, Machamp, Raichu, Jinx, Starmie, Hitmontop, Hitmonchan, Arbok, Weezing, Persian, Vaporeon, Flareon, and Dragonite. Now, for feasibility, I just want to do a few things. Uh, The thing that really bothers me about a couple of these are that one, two, three of them, I think, looking at it right now, have, uh, what is it? They have Alolan forms. Mm-hmm. And I don't see Golem, Raichu, and Persian getting a getting a Mega Evolution if they already have an Alolan form. That seemed to be one of the requirements to get an Alolan form to begin with, is to not already have a Mega Evolution, because then it would kind of confuse things. Mm-hmm. Personally, and, I think it'd be super cool to have like Mega Alolan Raichu and like Mega Raichu. 
I think so too, but I don't know that they're willing to go into that kind of complexity. The way I'm looking at it, though, is a lot of these are signature Pokemon for a lot of characters in the game. Like, you mm. could have Golem be Brock's signature Pokemon, Raichu, Surge, and Persian is Giovanni. So if there's rebattles and they want to give ah. them a Mega, that's where I'm kind of thinking with it. The the only thing I could see that falling apart in, like, I Golem, Golem, Starmie, and Persian I can understand. Raichu as well. But I don't know about Jinx Machamp. The hit, the Hitmons I can kind of understand. Oh, the Elite Four. There you go. Okay, never mind. Open, closed. We're done. Yeah, the weird thing is the Elite Four, each of the members apart from Bruno has access to a Mega already. But, like, the question is, are they good enough Megas for them? Like, Aerodactyl and Charizard is not really a Lance type thing. Dragon yeah. is Lance. Yes. Yeah. So, in support of there being new Mega Evolutions, I'd like to point out that, like, most of the Mega Evolutions were pertaining to, uh, uh, like, like, from what I recall, wasn't it, like, Gen 2, Gen 3, like, stuff? Because... No. No, we got a lot of Gen 1. There were a lot of Gen 1, but, like, since this game is only Gen 1 Pokemon, right? Mm -hmm. then it should they're probably trying to add more in order to have diversity mm -hmm. that's mm. another part of it too and then you have arbok and wheezing which are team rockets pokemon yeah oh, they could use megas yeah they could arbok should have gotten an alone form in uzum but they didn't oh go, so arbok would be so great with omega because of intimidate oh mm -hmm. my god yes oh. i agree it would be maybe it could be competitively viable one day <laughs> like I, I occasionally use Arbok. Like I had it on Draft League, and like it's still pretty good. Just like if you know how to run it. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. it's not. It's, it gets Sucker Punch, right? Sucker Punch, not Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch. It gets Sucker Punch. Yeah, it's like a Coil Strat with Gunk Shot is decent. Mm -hmm. It can. Yeah, and it has a really high, surprisingly high attack stat. So yeah, yeah it's like what it. is it? It's over a hundred, I think. Yeah, I can look it up real quick for you. Yeah, but uh, the thing that I want to take away here, though is just, I don't know, if they decided to add new Megas in, I just don't see it happening with the Alolan forms. Because they say, they confirm the Alolan forms are going to be in Let's mm -hmm. Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Which bothers me even more. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the only way we get Dark Tides. Yeah. Well, no, it is the only way you get Dark Tides, which is fine. But at the same time, I don't know if I'm ready to handle like an Alolan, me a Mega Alolan Golem. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. My mouth is going to get filled with words, right? <laughs> I mean, Golem's still miserable. <laughs> Imagine saying this to someone like uh, 10 years ago. It's like, oh, my Mega Alolan Golem is going to destroy your Ultra Beasts using their z -moves. <laughs> They confirmed z -moves were in this game too, right? No, that hasn't been mentioned yet. They okay. dodged the question. You know... Z moves and megas at the same time and they're like we're not ready to talk about that yet that's yeah. honestly another thing because the way they've been doing the incorporation of new battling styles such as mega evolution and z moves is they've created these uh, scenarios where they're incorporated into the world's lore so with mega evolutions you have literally all these pokemon died because of, of a machine using xerneas and the veltal that turned them into crystallized life that became mega stones and that was like Gen 6. And like, so having mega evolutions in other games doesn't really, you know, coincide with that lore because, like, how does there need to the Veltal get outside Kalos? Stuff like that. And then Didn't you we have, retcon like... that in Oras, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we did. Primal we... energy. Yeah. Because it was too dark. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, primal energy created mega stones, too. Mm -hmm. That's like also localized. So, like, they keep having to come up with these scenarios, like, where these Pokemon, like, are where these megastones are coming from and also in well, Sun and Moon, well in sun the, and moon they didn't really do anything they were just kind of like hey mega evolution exists here's a stone go do it <laughs> yeah exactly like but then you have this lore so like is there like a finite supply of these megastones can you make them so like maybe, some things i just want to be answered maybe but, the like, kanto lore is going to be mr fuji made them yeah, yeah. <laughs> That that's true. I would because love to see a tie into Pokemon Origins with that. Right? Yeah, that's that would be a good way to take it. 
Well, in uh, Alola, you've got the Z moves, right? And we're talking about there being Z moves maybe in these games, which hasn't really been announced. But you literally need a Z power bracelet created by an island guardian, right? One of the tapus Mm -hmm. in order to be able to use Z moves in the first place. So, like, it would make no sense for there to be, like, Z moves. What I could see them doing is in future games incorporating, like, a company such as Devon or Sylph that like manufactures Z power slash mega bracelets or something. Mm. So for like widespread trainer usage and that slash would be gen cool. eight battle gimmick bracelets. Yeah. You know uh, what I'm, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. No, I could totally see something like that. Yeah. It's like your battle bracelet or whatever. I honestly don't see Z moves being a main focus in gen eight. What I do see Z moves doing is I see them being like post game again, kind of like mega stones is you kind of just go through the game and then maybe there's like a cool little side quest and maybe the region has like a small little region, kind of like the Sinjo ruins where Mm. you go into that cave and then you unlock mega evolution there or not mega evolution, but Z moves there. And like you get to see like ghosts of the tapus or something, or they could even take it a step further and kind of like they used to do in other generations, they can have callbacks in their legendaries to other generations and we could have the fifth tapu be in the next game right and you go to the shrine it's in a completely different region from alola and you go to this region of the and there's a little mini shrine for the fifth tapu there and then they hook you up with a z bracelet so i've been playing through ultra sun and um there is a point whenever you're at uh akala or maybe it's the yeah, I think village it's akala or maybe it's in pony but they literally say uh, the Tapus occasionally come to their shrines, but otherwise they just go wherever they want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They are free spirits, but they're tied to the island. So they protect the island because they literally are the spirit of the island, but they can go mm-hmm. wherever they want. I mean, that could happen as well. You could just see them like go out and you have some encounter with Tapu Bulu or whatever, and you get a Z bracelet. I would really like to see it come from somebody that's not Tapu Koko. In my opinion, I would love to see a non Tapu Koko bracelet come to a trainer because I mean, Tapu Koko is really good and competitive and it's also just everywhere in the anime right now. And it's the melee melee guardian. So everybody knows Tapu Koko. I would love to see like Tapu Bulu get the spotlight. Okay. You know, no one wants that. but like, <laughs> I think they're trying to like not incorporate, you know, Lele and Bulu so much since they're literally like murderers. Yeah. Because yeah, like Bulu destroyed an entire suit like settlement slash supermarket because it was on his like land, sacred land, and it wasn't blessed properly or whatever. And Lele literally sprinkles like glitter on people that kills them. No, it doesn't kill them. <laughs> it like that's what it's supposedly like a psychopathic Pokemon because of like its incredibly like fickle temperament. It will like fly over battlefields and its glitter oh, yeah. will either heal you if you're on its side or this like burn your skin yeah it's fine though it's tapu lele it's in the anime all the time healing people it's cute people like it it's pink it's fluffy probably and it's a little nuclear warhead yeah (laughs) it's adorable (laughs) it's absolutely fantastic so it's just not that it's not that big of a deal just deal with tapu lele but back to i mean we just came up with an excellent opinion though for gen uh, Gen 8 games, Game Freak, so once again, take notes. Um, but going on to these Mega Evolutions, though, I do want to talk a little bit about how ridiculous some of them would be because, I mean, I, the one that comes to my mind specifically, if it gets a Mega, is Machamp. Because <laughs> what's a Mega Machamp? It's gonna, is it gonna be Warm Spider-Man? Arms. Yeah, I'm expecting, like, another set of arms. <laughs> and then you've got six-armed Machamp over here, uh, I'm also worried if it does get a Mega, if Mega Machamp does happen, what does that mean for Pokin? Does it does is there an update that rolls out that Machamp's burst is now Mega Machamp and he turns into six arm nonsensical man? <laughs> so does Mega Machamp still need the power belt or can it take that oh, off? Oh he can take it off <laughs> and it's a whip now. You know, and he just beats people with it. <laughs> but Oh no, please stop. <laughs> yeah. Get this out of my head. No. 
So <laughs> I could totally see Mega Machamp doing something like that. I it, it will bother me if that happens. Only because I know things like Pokin won't update it. And Pokin is a quote unquote current gen Pokemon game. And it'll really bother me if Mega Machamp's not put into that, but Mega Champ Mega Machamp exists when Megas are typically the burst for everything else that has a Mega. Mm-hmm. It's just one of those things that's going to bother me. And it's going to yeah. make me real sad. Real sad. I got you. got you. But I don't know. I mean, are there any other... Like, the other thing that stands out to me is Jinx as well. Because Jinx is one of those Pokemon that used to kind of fit into a group, but no longer does because of Gen 4. And because they wanted to kind of just, like, stop talking to Jinx after Gen 2 uh, for various reasons. And so... But Jinx, Magmar, and Electabuzz used to hang out together because if you think about it, they were fire, ice, and electric types, right? And mm-hmm. they kind of felt the same trio typing as Zapdos, Articuno, Moltres. And then in Gen 2, they all get baby forms. You know, you got Smoochum, Elekid, and Magby. So it kind of fits into that. And you're just like, okay, let's see where this keeps going, right? And then Gen 4 comes along, and then Electabuzz gets Electivire, and Magmar gets Magmordar. Uh, which is kind of an abomination, but that's a discussion <laughs> for say, another day. An upgrade, but <laughs> yeah, but we don't yeah. get a Jinx Evo, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And probably for obvious reasons, Jinx has gone under a lot of scrutiny, and until November when we get its Jinx plush, and mm-hmm. but it's gone under a lot of scrutiny, and we don't get any evolutions for it. I honestly, I would be much happier with a Gen Eight evolution of Jinx. Mm-hmm. But I don't think they're going to go that route anymore with Pokemon. I think adding evolutions to existing Pokemon is something that they're kind of done with. I wish they'd do more split evolutions, but that's about it. Yeah, I could see split evolutions happening. I mean, you got that tack on to Eevee. That was the only one that's happened in the past three generations. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because Eviolites existed for three generations. Yes. Uh, But I would like... That's honestly the real big thing. Eviolite exists, and that's a big problem. Um, mm-hmm. uh, they could just axe Eviolite. They honestly could. They've yeah, done that with a lot of items, not... but I, I feel like they would change the meta significantly if they did that. They or would Porygon. because it makes so many things viable. Little Cup or... would be a completely different field too. Yeah, <laughs> it would be. I don't know. I feel like Eviolite to an extent is somewhat broken in different regards because I think the real big things that show up for that are things like Dusclops being better mm-hmm. than Dusknor because Oregon. of Eviolite. And then you've also got things like... Th- these are all things that existed before Eviolite that I think are still broken, regardless. Um, you have Rhydon, which I think with Eviolite is stupid. I mean, there's just a number of Pokemon that are stupid with Eviolite. Just so Chansey. many of them. Chansey with Eviolite, stupid. It's a lot of... Yeah. I'm really upset that a lot of Pokemon can be better than their evolutions with Eviolite. I'm okay <laughs> I'm... with Eviolite making Pokemon good enough to uh, good enough to be usable. Like in the, I think good examples of this are something like Dewblade. Do, you would you, you can use Dewblade without it being an Aegislash, right? Aegislash is objectively better than Go- Dewblade with Eviolite. That's fine. I, I stuff like that I'm okay with, and I think this could be remedied. In either if they axe Eviolite all together from the game, or they can nerf it. They've nerfed items several times. And they can mm-hmm. nerf Eviolite. Instead of being a 50% boost, you can bring it down to like a 25% boost. And mm-hmm. then things are just not as good. I do not like what you're saying. <laughs> I know you don't, but I mean, this is something that could happen if you want to see... This is, this is honestly from a more casual perspective. Um, as a competitive player trying to appreciate things from a more casual perspective. If I want to see more evolutions of already existing Pokemon chains, this is something that needs to be addressed because then you can have things like fully evolved Pokemon right now. Like imagine if Komala got an evolution right now and it could just hold Eviolite. That would be Uh, stupid. uh, uh, (laughs) Yeah. Right. And so I, I think Eviolite, is, I mean, it's definitely one of the more popular items in the game, especially if you're playing in lower tiers um, of singles. But let's be honest, uh, Nintendo doesn't care about Smogon. They never have, they never will, or they would nerf uh, Lando somehow. <laughs> well, Lando's even a mess other places too. But Yeah, it is. Yeah, it I... is. <laughs> I guess now we have Incineroar too, so... 
I don't think Incineroar is bad. I don't think it's as cancerous. No, it's not as oppressive. It's not as like ugly and just always there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I re- th- if we can, that's that's a discussion for another day. Uh, <laughs> but mm. oh, oh, the other thing they want to give Megas to Vaporeon, Jolteon, and Flareon. According to this rumor, if this is true, that's what's happening, right? Um, mm. Vaporeon, Jolteon, and Flareon getting Megas. That would be weird. I wouldn't be okay with that. Because of the other evolutions not having them. That's one reason I wouldn't be okay with it. I mean, maybe Flareon could be good. But... We are still waiting for Mega Slowking, too. But... <laughs> oh, man, I want Mega Slowking. That would be so cool. His, like, the hat just gets really big, and he's, like, waddling. Oh, my God. That would be so cool. I'd be down. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all for Mega Slowking. What tier is yeah. Sloking, by the way? That's poke of the episode. Never mind. It's Sloking. Are you or you you <laughs> decided. It's 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 Sloking. I gotta use Sloking now. I gotta I gotta build a Sloking team. And <laughs> But I mean there's I don't think I don't know. The the real problem with recent Pokemon, the past three generations specifically. Uh, well not three generations, I'll say the past two generations and then generate and then let's go has been the amount of Generation 1 love we've been seeing. And I yes. think if you go and look at the core fan base, this is not a good direction to keep going. Because a lot of the reaction I got from the core fan base about this, one, they don't like the game because it's not real Pokemon or something like that, which is fine. You can feel that way. It's still a Pokemon game. It's just a different Pokemon game. And I think that they were also turned off by the fact that oh, why do we have to keep going back to Kanto? Why do we have to keep celebrating Generation 1 Pokemon? Because in Generation 6, we did that, right? We started uh-huh. giving Mega Evolutions out to Pokemon. You could pick a Gen 1 starter if you played X or Y. And then we go to we go to Sun and Moon, which are the 20th anniversary, so that's fine. I can understand some love there, where only Generation po- 1 Pokemon are getting Alolan forms and stuff like that. And it's it's getting tiresome, because now we've got Let's Go where we're we're starting to get see the Gen 1 fatigue kind of finally set in. And everybody's like, yeah, we understand the Gen 1 Pokemon are the originals. People are really loving, loving it. It's fine. But I feel like the 2019 game is the time to step away from that. And honestly, this would just be a way to highlight the Gen 1 love is to give these guys more Mega Evolutions and just blow every generation out of the water. You know who could use some Gen, uh, Mega Evolutions? Gen 5. All it's got is Audino, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's got Audino. And that means that they didn't forget Gen 5 existed. They didn't forget it. They they gave it to Audino. You could have given it to Substrika, okay? Mega Substrika, guys. Yeah. And the things mm-hmm. that are on the list of Game Freak now, not to put in the game because Thatch says so, Mega Substrika, off the list. Um, But that would be cool. Mega Shiftry would be cool if we even want to go down the Gen 3 route. Mega Shiftry yeah. and Ludicolo would be cool. But, I mean, there's a ton of Gen 3 Megas already. But even then, yeah. we could start touching on the Gen 2 Megas, right? There's only a few of those guys. It would be really cool for the... For the jump Luff. Jump Luff. I think even the starters would be great to just, like, <laughs> highlight them. <laughs> the starters need a lot of help. Yeah. <laughs> those, things, those things are horrible. Yeah. Mm. But I feel like that's a way to hit nostalgia of more traditional fans. Is to start giving maybe Gen 2 love, but just start spreading it out, you know? I, I'm tired of Gen 1, guys. Just just give me some Gen Gen something else love. Anything, honestly. Just give me anything. <laughs> that's true, though. They're always going to come back to it, though. It's, 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 they uh, are. They are. Well, that's starting point. A lot of it's other generations too. have power crept Gen 1 so much. Mm-hmm. Though they power crept Gen, Gen 2 even more. But it's beside the boat. Yes. Gen 2 had a lot of bad Pokemon. <laughs> Well, then we got Gen 7, where it was just like, here's the Tapus, and then here's every Pokemon that's slower than Molasses. And mm-hmm. that that was a problem as well. But yeah, uh, I think this is a good place to wrap it up. I think Gen 1, we can just stop with that. I don't think these are going to happen, personally. Uh, I also am wary of these names actually being trademarked. And now that I've said this, it's going to come out like in next month. There's going to be a video, and it's going to be like, look at all these cool new Megas and Pokemon Let's Go. I was going to say we'll know in like two weeks because this is the kind of thing they yep. announce at Worlds. Worlds. I agree. You're exactly right. 
So that's where we'll end it, guys. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back at you with the Pokemon of the episode. Pokemon of the episode. And welcome back to the show. Our Pokemon of the episode this week is National Dex number 199, Slowking, the Royal Pokemon. It's called the Sage of the Sea. It engages in battles of wits with Oranguru. But the result is usually a draw. Wait, wait, why is it called the Sage of the Sea? And then it's just like it also battles against Oranguru in trivia. I think another <laughs> one of the Pokédex entries like say that Oranguru come to the edge of the forest and Sloking like walk up to the beach and they meet each other and mm-hmm. engage in games of wits, like yeah. chess and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. That. That's how I imagine it. Like a battle of wits, it's a slow king and a and an orange guru playing chess. That's exactly how I would imagine it. Because they're both like some of the smartest Pokemon out there. You know, like other than like Alakazam, which is just so smart that it like can't even like control how smart it is, but it still only can learn four moves. But that's another matter, anyway. Uh, but yeah, like they're super smart. I'm very surprised that slow king is in the NU tier. I'm absolutely astonished because slow bro for the longest time had been in higher tiers in gen six it was actually in ou for a while i know it dropped down to uu for a little bit in sun and moon in gen seven which is fine that's awesome but i'm i'm really sad to see that it's not like in ru i think this thing deserves to be in ru it's probably literally because of usage Um, i was gonna say the thing i always say about water pokemon is that the lower you get down in tears the more grass pokemon that show up because those things are horrible so (laughs) well so slow king's not too bad i mean he's got a base 95 hp base 75 attack base 80 defense base special attack 100 base special defense 110 base speed 30 that's fine it's a slow king it's it's in the name but he also has access to regenerator so he's not a terrible pokemon for uh for comparison, Slowbro is essentially the same Pokemon, except the special attack or the special defense and defense are flipped. That's all. So these aren't different Pokemon. Slowking, I think, has a slightly better move pool as well. I'm not sure how different it is than Slowbro's, but Slowbro is kind of boxed into one type of thing. But you could do a lot with Slowking. He's more physically offensive, typically. Yeah, uh, Slowking is cool because it can get moves like Fire Blast. Mm hmm. Uh, well, which Slowbro gets it too. Slowbro gets that yeah. too, yeah. Uh, I think Sloking, the main appeal is for the higher special attack, so you need need it to uh, combat specific threats that you're up against. Um, so Slowbro actually has the same special attack. Fun fact. <laughs> yeah. So what exactly? Is it higher special defense then? Yeah, it's special yeah. defense versus defense. Okay. That's literally the only difference. And Wow. Uh, so you could run an Assault Vest Slowking. And he gets access to things like Scald, Psy Shock, Fire Blast, like you were saying. He gets access to Dragon Tail as well. I, I don't know. Does Slowbro get Dragon Tail? I'm going to assume yes. Just because I think they have almost the exact same uh, move pool. Actually, Dragon Tail is exclusive to Slowking. That That's cool. interesting. So Slowking gets phasing, if that makes yeah. you feel any better. I could see that having better synergy on a team that relies on Stealth Rocks and yeah. such. I just know that Slow King is typically more offensive. And I mean, this is an Assault Fest set, so you can get away with a modest Slow King. Even then, you could probably even get away with, instead of modest, you could knock down its speed even more. It's base 30. You're not going anywhere. And <laughs> I mean, 248 HP, 8 speed, so you can outspeed. This is an NU, of course. If you want to outspeed, I don't know, so another Slow King, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Love There's it. probably something else with the base 30 speed that will help you out speed because it's NU. But RU, I think, is way more like where this thing should be. You can run that exact same set. Though if you get a little more investment into your defense and into your special defense, you can do a little bit more because you have things like Salazzle up there, which you really need to worry about. But Slow King can actually handle Salazzle really well with an Assault Vest. Yep. Um, however, he can't run Slack off there. Uh, because he's running a soul fest, but he does get access to slack off as well. Uh, another way to use him, which is typical in NU and is actually very usable, is as a trick room sweeper in NU. You can run trick room, something like psychic, psy shock, or psychic. It doesn't matter, whichever one, take your pick. Scald or surf, and then nasty plot. You click trick room, and slow king's outrunning everything. 
And you just max out the special attack, max out his HP again, guys. And zero IVs and speed, of course, so that you can just tear everything up. Yeah, go with a quiet nature. I'm just really surprised it's not that... I'm really surprised it's an NU. I think it's a better Pokemon than that. I mean, Slowbro is, too. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think Slowbro is a significantly better Pokemon than NU. I remember using Slowbro in OU back in ORS. It was. It was an OU. That's the thing. Because Slowbro and Amoongus hold a special place in my heart because that's like the first Regenerator core that ever existed. Mm-hmm. Love your Regenerator cores. Dude, that Regenerator cores are the best. It depends on what... I mean, the meta right now is a little bit faster. It's a little bit more offensive than it used to be back in Gen 6. Or, uh, maybe not Gen 5, but back in Gen 6, it's definitely more <laughs> offensive than Gen 6. And so that does hurt defensive Pokemon more, but I could still totally see Slowbro operating and even Slowking for that matter, operating in the UU tier. Now UU tier being the OU of gen six, um, Mm -hmm. almost in its entirety. So you could definitely run them there. I don't see, it's honestly just got to be a usage problem. There's probably some other water types that can beat them out. And I mean, in RU, you have things like Rotom Mo that still exist. Which, Rotomo, I think, is a UU mon as well. It works so well in UU. Uh, I, I think it's just a matter of time before it gets bumped up there. Yeah, that's my that's my spiel on uh, Slowking being undervalued. I don't know if it's actually got any relevant cards in the TCG. Probably not. Yeah, I, oh, there was something in uh, Breakpoint. Yeah, it's a coin flip card that moves energy. It's, oh, that's interesting. That yeah. sounds still like it's bad, but it was yeah, it was it's dumb, never really it's used. Thing. It was kind of good and limited. Uh, kind of straying away from competitive. Uh, Sloking's whole thing is that so it has a shelter on its head that doesn't really look like a shelter, but it's like a morphed shelter, sort of like what Slowbro's shelter is. And because it's biting its brain, it gets smarter. Is, is that like it's from the toxins? There's apparently toxins. In the shelter as well, that like mixed with its brain. I think it's in one of its Pokedex entries. Um, yeah, it's in a lot of Pokedex it entries. is. It has an incredible intellect intuition. Oh, here it is. When its head was bitten, toxins entered Slowpoke's head and unlocked an extraordinary power. Every time it yawns, Shelter injects more poison into it. The poison makes it more intelligent. Now, the dark side of this would be like it's gonna die because it's getting smart. Like, that would be the irony. Yeah, thanks, kids. Show. Yeah. I don't know that it, nobody suggests that it's going to die. Yeah, maybe. It's just so weird that, like, I didn't think clams, like, were ever, you know, unless it was like a, you know, co- cone snail sort of thing. But, like, that's not even, re- like, it's kind of close to clam, but mm, I don't know. Clams aren't let's, let's find out. Let's go. We're going to dig a little bit into the shoulder nonsense real quick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because it's always been something that you think about, right? Yeah. Uh, so, like... Shelter. Um, uh, so it's apparently Shelter is a mix between a clam and a leech. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what they say because it, the poisons um, are more than likely inspired by leeches. Huh. Yeah. So there we go. There's that. We solved it. Got the problems done, guys. So whenever I see Shelter, like, this is like a weird aside. If anyone remembers the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, I always think of Dracula. Yes. Yeah. And, like, uh, <laughs> Dracula don't lick. Dracula don't suck, he lick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what's going on with Shelter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yep, yep. licking with its tongue. <laughs> yeah, uh, Shelters are really weird. I don't know. Like the whole shelter relationship, you can definitely tell that was like a Gen One thing where they wanted to do more with the Pokemon design, and they just <laughs> never got to it because I think there was actually something in the actual base code for a shelter evolution where it looks more like the shelter on Slowbro's tail. Uh, I think that was in the Space World demo too, and that would be something interesting. I mean, that could have been a cool branched evolution. Even then, I think that's something they that could add to Gen Eight. You could, if we want to add branched evolutions, like we were talking about, something yeah. something shelter learns a certain move and become it learns Veno shock or something becomes a water poison type that looks like the shelter on the tail of a slow bro and boom you've got it right and after all these years we can also get that weeping bell evolution and that weeping everyone bell. can be happy <laughs> everyone can be happy yes you sun sunstone on a weeping bell and you get you get not victory bell 
And it's a fighting type now because it can be. <laughs> I don't know why I'm thinking of this right now, but for the next game, fusion fusion evolutions where you have you're not the first one to think about that (laughs) that combine into another i don't want that and the scary thing is that's like a real thing that could happen (laughs) edward (laughs) if anyone's seen full monocles never mind all right (laughs) and that's where we'll end the pokemon of the episode this week guys uh if you want to read more about awesome Pokemon stuff, check out PuckoPodcast.com. We are going to kick it on over now to the mailbag. It's mail time! It's time for the mailbag! Send in your emails! And on to the mailbag, as always, the mailbag is brought to you by the energy drink, Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. Hooves! Sigma didn't get to do it. It's fine. Yeah, so, yeah, fine. yeah you just gotta yell hooves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. as always, we will give out the Green Tauros badge roll to anybody that inspires discussion during the mailbag. For those of you new to the show, this is a segment where we read listener emails you, we, you typically have a question that we ask you guys. And so last week we talked about a mature Pokemon anime, and we wanted to know what you guys would like to see in your more adult, more exciting, probably better anime. So we'll jump right on into it then. Our first email is going to be from Bod Talk, and I believe Scrawn wanted to read this one. Sure. I'm uh, For this week, I'm going to do a mob boss voice. Greetings, power up punching puck of people. After that last part, I'm ready to deliver some punishment. Specifically, I'm going to drop some knowledge on you guys about my beloved Sun and Moon anime. Plucking out an issue that changed to a simplified art style of the characters has allowed the animators to hit a payday of more intricate and interesting animation. They have managed to give anime fans a real a present with not just more enjoyable animation but more intricate, interesting locations than the same six forest backgrounds in every episode, combined with the power trick of references to other anime and characters who can actually emote. So wait, 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 wait. I, I want to jump in, though, if I can, uh, just as like a comment. Um, yeah. So he's he's very upset about the same six forest a- backgrounds and then also characters you can actually emote. So one of the reasons they changed the art style for Pokemon Sun and Moon was so that they could have characters that can emote better. <laughs> Fun fact. Nice. That is a that is a strength of the Sun and Moon anime. Cool. Uh, a weakness is you can't really tell any progress in that anime. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, it's <laughs> awful in that regard. Like, you don't know what the end goal is. Is there going to be a league? Maybe there was in the games, but... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they're not following the game at all. They're just kind of doing whatever they want. There was like this little arc where they kind of did stuff with Nebby for like 10 episodes and then it was over. They can go wherever they want. So there's like, it doesn't follow a track. It's yeah, a I don't like it. Get in the back, Nebby. <laughs> but go ahead, continue. That was just my aside. That was my aside. All right. I'll just read it in my normal voice for the rest of it. The Pokemon themselves now have actual personality and are interesting characters in their own right, instead of just being generic cardboard cutouts for our heroes to power whip into shape. The change from a format from a journey to going to school in one location has allowed development of a wider range of characters and allows us to see far more of the Pokemon world than we have ever gotten before. We see the stories and adventures of kids who love Pokemon battles, but as all kids do, have other interests too. We see the heart-pounding pursuit of the Chargebug Racers and the wacky antics of Team Rocket trying to win that year's supply of pancakes. We also get tender character development with Lily dealing with the trauma of having a mother who is a complete narcissist and is emotionally abusive. With the core themes of the franchise intact, Sun and Moon explores brave new worlds for Pokemon fans of all ages. If you are looking for a great anime, get psyched up. And watch yourself some sun and moon, reminding everyone out there to play nice. Bontag, and he had so many Pokemon moves in his in this. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know that the sun and moon anime is what we want. I think it's 
a good anime. Don't get me wrong. I think it's definitely different from the anime we're used to. But I don't think it's a mature anime that follows any kind of arc, which is what I think what we really want. Yes. Yeah, the serialization on X and Y and Z is something I really respected, and that's non-existent mm-hmm. in Sun and Moon. Yeah, we, I had such hopes when seeing X, Y, and Z do that. I'm like, man, maybe they'll keep doing this with the anime. We'll get something really good. And then we went to Sun and Moon, and it's like, that's all gone. This is still goodish, but it's not what I wanted. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Uh, our next email is going to be from Shira, and I think Sigma's got this one. I do. Hi, wonderful Puckle hosts. It's been a while. I was listening to episode 394, and no, um, I have not gotten my shiny female hidden ability EV yet, but I'm still going for it. I won't give up. My friend from Canada traded me a shiny naughty EV. I figured I'd make it a mixed Flareon, since it is the only EV Evo I figured could handle that nature, even with the Spideff buff, debuff. What do you guys think? Yes. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> there, there's not many physical EV options to yes. start with. So <laughs> I guess you could put like a special move on there, like Shadow Ball or something. I. It's not hmm. good though. Overheat. Just yeah. Yeah. Wall breaker option. I think it yeah, has like what, 95 special attack. Mm-hmm. Is mm. that what the stat is? But it gets Flare Blitz. Blitz. So. Yeah. Which everyone said, oh, that's what's going to make Flareon great. And, Maybe yeah. like a, if it has a good hidden power, it might be decent. Mm-hmm. Possibly. Mm, I don't know. All right. I don't know much about the manga, but so far I have gotten into the anime, which is pretty cute and unwinding to watch. I'm a big manga fan, though, so an idea I that I'd like to see in the Pokemon manga would be a mini-release of maybe two to three volumes of specific characters. I would like to read about N, Gladion, Lily, and Blue. They could also make background stories for the champions, like Lance. How did he get to be a champion, and how did he get so many Dragonite? The people want to know. I have that would a be a cool Chronicles like uh, uh, series. That would be really cool. Episode of Lance? Yeah. Like a couple episodes of Lance, a couple episodes of this guy. I think that would be cool. Honestly, they just need to bring Chronicles back. I think Chronicles was such an interesting series. Um, I liked it, too. I wasn't a big fan of the Richie episodes. They tended to use him as an Ash villain. In too they many of did. Them. They, <laughs> were just like, they were just like, oh, here's an episode with Ash in it, but it's Richie. Yeah, it's like a protagonist with a Pikachu. Just yep. what I wanted to see in my side break. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I have a prayer for Thatch. Please, <laughs> please don't say that the VGC scene is dying. It just breaks my heart since it's a little, it's the part I love the most. I can't wait to see worlds and I hope to see my favorite VGC player on stream, Barry Anderson, UK. Thank you again for all your hard work on the podcast. I have recently become a patron to support your good work. Regards, Shira. Well, thank you, Shira. I, so I, maybe I shouldn't say it's dying, but it's definitely not growing. I don't Um, think it'll ever die. I just don't think you'll, see it ever become something great unless a massive culture shift happens or in a main game like pokemon sort of like nudges you by teaching you how to play vtc with like in-game encounters uh even then that's really hard to do it's really hard to have an ai on the level of an actual opponent Mm -hmm. you know because most of pokemon is kind of chess and reactionary and I don't think you can get an AI that would do that. N- not at least well. And that's the big thing. I I think the real hurdle to VGC right now, and I, I want to have Sigma on another episode where he and I can just kind of dig into this, maybe with Gator even, or somebody else. But in terms of VGC, I think the biggest hurdle is the culture that the current players have when it comes to new people entering the scene. I don't think it's very healthy. I don't think um, the idea that they have for you just playing the competitive side of the game, I think it gets kind of bad when you consider people like Ray Rizzo. I'm not saying he's not a good player because he is a good player. He is a very good competitive Pokemon player. However, when he gets to, when you get to people who go, I just play it competitively, 
and I don't play it for the Pokemon story or anything. And he'll play far enough in the game to go get his Mega Bracelet or whatever, like in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. You just get there and you're done. I I think that's kind of where you start. I don't know. There's there's something to be said about the spirit of the game, which I think is lost in that community. And is something that is almost even looked down upon if you're not training hard enough to be able to get to that level. And it, it, it's it's a give and take. It depends on what Pokemon wants from the VGC community, and I don't see them fostering it that much. Which is good, in my opinion, just because they don't want to foster that attitude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the recent team sheet rules we can talk about one day, but... Uh, <laughs> Oh, all Hello. right. Yeah. So that is thanks. Thanks for that, Shira. I apologize for breaking your heart. Um, all right. So this last email that we have today is from Juggler Jax. Dear Thatch and wonderful co-host. Thank you. <laughs> he complimented <laughs> you. He's just like, I know Scron's going to be on this because there's a really good chance that he's been on the past four, four out of the five episodes. Yeah. Um, and so he's just like, he, he, that was for you, Scron. That was for you. Yeah. I'm just always available to fill in, you know? I am a longtime <laughs> listener, but first time emailer. You can call me Juggler Jax. I have not watched much of the anime at all, so I do not know if my suggestions already exist, but I thought I'd add to the conversation by listing things that would get me excited to watch a Pokemon anime on a regular basis. I'm excited. Uh, let's do this. My suggestions are follows. 1. Serious consequences from the decisions made. As you discussed, things should not always end up happily ever after. There needs to be a struggle and adversity. I'd be down. They kind of did that in XYZ. Yeah, with... Uh, oh, poor with, Jasmine. Th- yeah. Uh, <laughs> Pokemon behavior in the wild, among its own species and predators prey, which Pokemon look out for each other and which, how the food chain operates. Ah. <laughs> Deeper ha- habitat exploration, where exactly are these Pokemon found rather than a patch of grass or in the sea? What temperatures, plants, dens do they prefer? That I could see. I, that'd be okay with that. Uh, how humans impact the habitats of certain Pokemon and their populations across the Pokemon world. There are actually episodes that currently explore that every once in a while. They're not all the time, but every once in a while. I don't think they've done it in Sun and Moon, but they used to do it on other adventures. It'd be like, oh, well, this was built and this Pokemon doesn't have a home. No wonder he's all upset all the time. Uh, mm-hmm. There's actually one in Johto where a bunch of Pinsir move into Heracross territory. It's the episode where Ash catches Heracross. And there's like a huge food disparity because um, Team Rocket's actually affecting their ecosystem. Fun fact. I remember there being an episode a long time ago that was like this swamp was polluted because of human influence. I believe it. But like um, there was something going on that was preventing muck from coming to the swamp. And like Mm. the muck eat all the sludge, which ends up cleaning the lake, which is odd and controversial because apparently muck kills everything it touches you know but, yeah yeah cool <laughs> uh, <laughs> follow an older pokemon trainer 30 plus years old i don't think they need to be that old i think you literally give me like a 17 year old i'm good who yeah, never like started the po- yeah who never started the pokemon journey when they were younger how would their knowledge and experience of the pokemon world shape their adventure differently to a younger trainer actually there's something to be said about that um because I think the most favorable protagonist that people really liked, not just the black and white ones like Sigma was saying, but the ones in uh, Coliseum and in Pokemon Coliseum, oh, yeah. you play a 17 year old named Wes and kids really like playing as teenagers in their video games. It turns out you don't need to be a 10 year old. You can be a 17 year old on your Pokemon adventure. I think that would go well. Honestly, Pokemon Coliseum, the anime, give it to me. I want that. Uh, that, that's another option. I need my road be in my life. Oh my gosh, wouldn't that be so cool? Wow! Yeah, I could totally see that. <laughs> wouldn't that just be great? Like having a circle of like dancing Ludi Colo, just like surrounded <laughs> mug people. Yeah, dude, I want this. <laughs> I want this. <laughs> oh, B. Uh, and finally, I do not know how this would work, but I would love to see a couple instances where very powerful Pokemon release themselves from a trainer. This would be achieved by them breaking their Pokeball with a move and fleeing. I think it would be cool to see how the trainer and other party Pokemon in the Pokemon world reacts to this. So nobody in the anime ever catches legendary Pokemon because reasons. 
I mean, Tobias does. But... Tobias, Tobias, <laughs> and who's the other guy? Brandon. They oh do. yeah. They do, but that's it. That is literally what, it. What did Brandon Kent's? Yeah, uh, he had Articuno and the Reggies. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. Wow. No. Oh, was it Tucker with the Articuno? Somebody had an Articuno. It's the Battle Factory guy. With oh, the Articuno. Well, oh, um, yeah. I know the Pyramid Head has both uh, yeah, the set the of legendary birds and the Reggies. No, that's only an emerald. Oh, I don't think uh, he has the birds. Yeah. Huh. Uh, that's I hope this email didn't take up too much time to get through and that it sparked some interesting conversations. Love the podcast. Keep up the good work. A juggler Jax. Uh, so that is it for the emails this week, guys. So first of all, let's, before I forget, I think the only person we read today that doesn't have it is going to is, be, uh, is juggler Jax. So, uh, if he wants to, I think he inspired a good conversation though. Yeah, no, uh, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Ooh. Get you come to the discord, man. We'll give you, we'll make your name green. It'll be cool. <laughs> Uh, want to be green <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to send an email next week our prompt is going to be what mega evolutions would you like to see in pokemon let's go pikachu let's go eevee send that into puckle podcast at gmail.com or do you not want to see evolutions explain to us why in puckle podcast at gmail.com and we'll probably read it on the show next week so definitely jump on in with that so before we end the show, though, today, be sure if you want to hear more of Sigma's sweet voice, I'm sure he'll be on this show more often, but uh, you can always go to Puckle Plus if you want to hear more of his swab vocals, uh, where we have the TCG cast, Battle Cast, and Game Corner. That's another feed. Go ahead and go over there and subscribe to it. You can, of course, find out more about these things on our socials, on Twitter, Reddit, Facebook. All of those are on PucklePodcast.com. Check out our Discord. The invite link is in the show notes, as always. You can come and hang out with us. It's always on our website as well. So please do definitely check that out. And if you want to watch me do more shiny hunts or battles and do Shiro doing more TCG action, you can check out twitch.tv slash the puckle podcast where you can watch us do silly shenanigans like that. And finally, if you want to support the show, you could do so in a couple ways. One, you could just come watch us on Twitch. And if you have a Twitch prime membership or an Amazon prime membership, you can subscribe to us for free and that helps us out. We get two bucks for every subscription that we get that way. You can also go to our T Public store and buy some cool T-shirts, including a Driftblim daycare onesie for your child. Did you know that's on the store, Strong? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, uh, I did. And, no refunds. And you can go ahead and <laughs> buy those things. All, anything you buy there helps us out. You can, of course, also go to Patreon and support us directly where you can get sweet swag, such as Puckle TCG cards. You can also get... Uh, exclusive Pokemon that we distribute. And actually, next weekend, we are going to go ahead and distribute some of those Pokemon. Um, I believe next Saturday, we are going to be distributing a Zera Aura from the event in Japan to patrons of the $5 and above level. Just come to the Discord server and bug me. I'll be around all day. So if you want that Zera Aura and you're patron of $5 and above, hit me up. And I think that's going to be where we end everything. So I am Trainer Thatch. I'm Mr. Gron. I'm R Sigma. And here in the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's closing time.
As always, we would like to thank our patrons who help make this show possible. So thank you to Duly Noted, Ten Little Men, Andrea, The Fluffiest Whimsicott, Dr. Shamu, Mongo87, Snag, Dexio, Jushiro, Rotted Mushroom, Bosephus, Alvarin, Seth Vilo, Minor Minetric, Claude Nine, The Beauty and the Geek, John R. Sigma, Doc McStuffles, Jestern, The Golden Klefki, Uncle Oshawott, Trevor, TJ, Shambles, Bird Keeper Cobra, Daniel, Traby, Greg, Alec, Carnivore J, Mikey, Ozzy, Halfful Reviews, The British Gent, Sparky, Brian, Dylan, Shira, Ironcaster, Orange Avenger, Thomas Hansen, Locke, Dennis, Echo, Anime Gravy, Travis, Mark, Inferno, and The Real EV. As always, guys, thank you for that. Without you guys, what we can do here is just not possible. So we really do appreciate your input into the community in this financial way. <laughs> and as that, we're bumping up our patron stuff. We're going to be start doing monthly giveaways for Pokemon. Starting with next month, we're going to be giving away Zera Aura. So if you guys want to hop on that, make sure you're at the $3 tier or higher and you'll be a part of that giveaway. So we will catch you guys on the flip-flop.